Ladies and gentlemen, I will tell you something about Jyväskylä, which is a city in central Finland. What on earth does this gap in Jyväskylä mean? I will tell you. We are trying to make a new kind of way to make local architectural policy. Jyväskylä is a city of Alvar Aalto. This is a driving license. I don't know if it's for this uh, motorcycle with sidecar or just for ordinary car, but it is given to young Alvar Aalto in Jyväskylä in 20s. So Aalto used to live in our town and work there and spend all his summers in our city. Yes, this picture has been taken in Alta summer house, Muratsalo, with his second wife, Elissa, who was also a very talented architect. And we have a long history of talented architects working for our city. For example, Vivi Lön. She graduated more than 120 years ago, and she was the first female architect who, who established her own architectural company. And she also lived in Jyväskylä for about 10 years. Lots of many other architects, their careers show somehow in our environment, and we are very proud of that tradition. I think we have a very strong uh, shoulders to jump on. And what are we doing nowadays? This is a, a picture of our city. It doesn't look like these former cities. We are kind, kind of a young city and Jyväskylä is a city of modern architecture. This is a our cent central and the Lutakko area, which used to be a Finnish, uh, the oldest plywood factory area in Finland. Nowadays it's a residential and, and, and fair uh, area, and there is a path going around this Lake Jyväsjärvi. And almost every Sunday morning, you perhaps meet member of European Parliament, Ms. Henna Virkkunen, running there and uh, taking photos and putting the photos in Instagram. I love my city. It's a very popular uh, place to exercise these lake shores. Uh, Henna Virkkunen used to be the Minister of, uh, Cal uh, of Education and she used to be a chairman of the board of city planning when Jyväskylä approved the first local architectural policy program in Finland. So there we are, the population and what is our uh, very strong in our city. Almost 40,000 people live in housing areas planned and designed by architectural competition. So almost one third of our residents. And that is one tradition we, uh, we want to go on. So gap in Jyväskylä. This is a picture taken about a month ago. We have uh, every autumn event called City of Light. And this year we had bunnies created by lighting artist Amanda Parer. She's an Australian. And the bunnies were, they laid in our church park. And they got half of our city residents come to see them during one weekend. 
So 75,000 people came to see the bunnies in that weekend. So GAP means green infrastructure, architecture and participation in Uvascula. This first uh, program was approved in 2002 and this, was, this gentleman here was our mayor, Pekka Kettunen. You perhaps know the famous story of a, a city called Bilbao in Spain. Well, Uvascula is not a Bilbao, but it's perhaps small Bilbao because uh, the economics of the city uh, stood for uh, industry in 1970s and in 1980s, for example, wood processing factories started to close down and the unemployment was huge in Uvascula. Uh, people called our city Näivettylä, something terrible was ever. But then, then we got a new mayor and he started that now we must now we must work hard for the future and he took architecture as a driving force to city to become a new kind of city and here is also in the audience our city architect Ilkka Halinen who was the soul of this program there are a few uh, guidelines from that program. Uh, Uvascula is a city of education. We put children first, but not only children, but all the residents and decision makers and so on. We have, for example, Alvar Alto Museum in our city, which is a huge resource for uh, cooperation with schools and other and universities and so on. Yes, we have a tradition of beautiness in our area. This is Petayavesi, old church, 250 years old. Uh, it was made of wood. It's now a piece of UNESCO heritage. We are very proud of it. This is a church built uh, five years ago. There was a competition won by Ansi Lassila, Teemu Hirvilammi. They used wood in the interior and these two young, talented architects now travel around the world teaching and lecturing about architecture. We are very proud that also their careers have influenced our city development. And yes, we have the famous Alvar Aalto summer smoke sauna by the lake Pajanne. It's still there, it hasn't been burned down like sp smoke saunas supposed to burn. But also new things happen by these architectural policies. Uh, cooperation, methods to do things otherwise than others do is something in the very core of our architectural policy. Uh, this evening, former Prime Minister Paavo Lipponen will tell us which building is going to have a Finlandia Prize for Architecture this year. But last year, that price was given to Pukuokka housing block situating in Jyväskylä. It's actually affordable housing. Uh, uh, our government nowadays works hard to develop uh, wooden building in Finland. That's a little bit funny because we have all these forests, but during the 19th or 20th century we kind of lose the tradition of making buildings of wood. And now we are trying to bit by bit uh, uh, developing that kind of tradition, culture again in our country. 
uh, the uh, the judge for that competition last year was composer Kaija Saariaho. And she saw that Pukuokka was a promise of more human-friendly future. And this building wouldn't be there if uh, things hadn't been done a little bit differently with the town planning process and with, with the one company working there with us, an architect designing the building, buildings at the same time. I like this. Uh, architecture has to be good business too. And on the right side we can see the man who owns the housing company who built the Pukuokka building and he is very proudly presenting presenting it and on the left hand there is a resident in the same same kind of position being proud of her her apartment in that building so gap in Yuvaskula. we have a, this architectural policy program but we cannot just spend our time remembering how good things used to be. We have also the first local green space policy approved by our, uh, by our city council in 2012. And we have a participation program approved by the city council. But we now must ask what are these things together? Perhaps you know the famous Patsy Healy. Uh, she is a, a researcher and uh, writes, uh, has written a lot about town planning and urban planning. And she speaks about hard law and soft law. Yes, of course, we all, ha all have uh, legislations in our countries. But then we must have also this soft law practices for good environment. And what is different nowadays compared to that time 10 years ago, nowadays we don't have that so strong uh, support coming from the government. We are hoping that the government will, will start the architectural policy process again. There are cities that are doing it. And this kind of practices, the soft law practices, on my opinion, are something that are more important than the legislation. Because the soft law actions are in our work every day. So this tells the story in Finnish. Uh, letters A, V and O, they, they mean avoid Jyväskylä, kind of open Jyväskylä. Uh, we started this thinking about these three uh, elements that Finnish Green Building Council has defined uh, people, environment and economic that must be in good balance in city development. So this is the same in English. Architecture, green infrastructure, participation. All three, this together. Our landscape architect Mervi Vallinkoski, she's uh, also a very nationally, nationally appreciated expert in landscape architecture. And she talks about beautiful urban resilience. We show same kind of actions also coming from Weberg, for, for example. This is a urban space for stormwater. There are hundreds of different kind of plants and flowers that are, that are used to clean the stormwater. 
we shall have more of these kind of elements in our city in the future. We started reading our former program. What is still the same and what has changed? And here is some results of our analysis. I think the world is a little bit harder nowadays than it used to be 15 years ago. Don't you think too? Yes. It's even said that are you able to speak about architecture? Can you use the word architecture? Is it something that you can be familiar with? This participation, it's a little bit, uh, I think, a passive kind of uh, word. We have now, we speak now about urban activism and the fourth sector and shift in participants' role. They are not the objects, they are subjects. Uh, transparency, governance, of course, in all Nordic countries, and means of participation in information society. Yes, there is a need for long-term cross-sectoral solutions with the ability to adapt to fast-paced changes. And what we are now doing, we are forming a local way to act. So this is a picture that shows that, yes, we must create the very heart of our architectural policy. And then we have to show it and develop what it means in our internal actions, in city actions, how we cooperate. And it's an interesting question, who is inside and who is outside. And then we must tell the same story also to the external world. And perhaps also the end, the final document of this process is perhaps a video telling to our decision makers and everybody else what is our architectural policy. And then for ourselves, we must have something written down what is our way to do things. Now we have started this process not by we prepare some kind of document which is then approved by the city council. Yes, city council will be part of this process, but we call it more like a path that we are now going on and what we will find, we are not sure. It's not, the script isn't perfect yet. We give possibilities also for our, our uh, participators and others to come with us and tell us what shall we do. But for next year, it's an interesting year because Finland uh, will celebrate it 100 uh, celebration. There is a lot of different kind of actions going on all over the country. But we are now talking about, we are planning to have a spring of participation, summer of architecture and autumn of parks. And I don't know if we will have this uh, continuing year by year, but we will start like this. And these are little pearls that make the story alive. We have defined already a few actions that are coming that will be part of this, this uh, walking through this path. For example, early January we will have our build, Builders Forum. We will talk about these issues there. Albert Alto's birthday, City's birthday week. Yes, we will have again 
architectural competitions. We will arrange guided tours to our residents and our residents organize guided tours for us planners. Uh, we have the Kangas percent for culture going on. There is an art, artist working with every building. Uh, Kangas is our major development area near the city center. And yes, we will have an election year next year. Municipality decision makers and regional municip uh, decision makers are elected. And of course, we have to start educating the new decision makers. And we will have national local heritage conference in Jyväskylä. We would like to architecture be part of that program. Schools will start. We will renovate or restore one river and so on. We will also have the City of Light event again. So what more can we think about, we'll see after a year. Okay, I started this uh, presentation with Alvar Aalto, and I will end it with Alvar Aalto. This is the famous Saunatsalo Town Hall, designed by Alvar and Elisa Aalto. It's nowadays part of Jyväskylä. Uh, it's cultural heritage. It's open for public. There's still a library, housing. It's a live piece of architecture. But I will dedicate this presentation not for Ar Alvar Aalto, but to my mother, Mirja. Because she used to be a teacher and a chairman of the cultural board of the municipality of Saunatsalo in 1980s. They used to have their meetings there. And they started, the, for example, a local cultural festival. And after 35 years, it's still going on every year. Okay, and I dedicate this presentation to you, who are able to work hard for architectural policies now and in the future. It's up to us, isn't it? Thank you. Thank you, Lena. I think we got uh, at least some responses to my question why municipalities or cities create architectural policies, local architectural policies. I would like to ask uh, Anja Lena and Vigilek to come here. We have time for some questions if the audience wants to ask something. So please, there have, has been so many themes and, and interesting uh, ideas that... No questions? <laughs> so hello, I'm Timo Heino, a freelance journalist and from this kind of a perspective of a complete ignorance so i'll ask uh, i thank uh, the, the i thank for the all the interesting presentation but i like to know from hogesund in norway we heard what is the number one biggest problem in urban planning in hogesund and now i very much like to hear what is the one what is the one and the, the major the the mo the one and only problem in urban planning in Viborg and Jyväskylä? <laughs> I didn't ask you. No. <laughs> <laughs> Big question. <laughs> the one and only. Just one. <laughs> the, what is the, may, the most burning urban planning problem? Mm. Oh, I have to improvise now. <laughs> I think it's very difficult to summarize it to one single problem. We are in a transition period in Denmark. We are 
uh, questioning the the law of planning and the regulation of land and cities, and um, that is what we also have experienced in Viborg, that we are challenged on the uh, planning uh, regulations, so that many developers want to build something where they cannot build what they want, and uh, that perhaps is one of the. I will not say the only challenge, but it is, it is a challenge to to have this uh, equal discussion between developers and the municipality in order to get to the right solution, and also to to have the politicians to uh, support the the decision. Every, even though that it is going very well in Viborg, uh, we also have to be on the first step all the time and not say no to everything. We are not either. Copenhagen or Berlin or New York. So we also have to say thank you for new investments. Well, uh, if I had to use one word, I would say how to be resilient. It's not all about these green areas, because we need to be flexible. We need to get investments. Everything is not so obvious, and we need those methods, how we transform when everything is measured with numbers, how we changed uh, quantity into quality. Happy with that. <laughs> Are there some other questions? Yes, please. Yes, Pano Lehtuori, um, um, from here. Um, uh, this question is uh, mostly um, to, to Denmark and, and, and to Viborg, but uh, it actually concerns um, all of you in some way. Um, I understand that in Denmark uh, there was a quite big uh, municipal reform some time ago, and small municipalities were put together to create quite large, as we heard, uh, Viborg um, is pretty large in, in area. How this, uh, this reform, um, I mean, has influenced, uh, let's say, the attitudes um, to architecture and, and also the question you mentioned, this um, dynamic between um, planning, architecture, and uh, uh, development, and developers. The, which reform? I didn't hear the um, beginning of the question. The, the uh, municipal reform, uh, combining smaller uh, okay. smaller municipalities oh, to make I quite see. large, like yes. Viborg, is pretty large yes. in area. Yes. We are a municipality of uh, five and a half uh, former municipalities who came together in 2007, forming this new big uh, municipality. And uh, I worked in the former Viborg municipality, so I was in this big city uh, municipality, and the other cities around Viborg was more uh, agriculture um, municipalities. So that has been some discussions, and it's still going on. What? Where, where should we make the development? Is it in the rural um, uh, or the, um, the, uh, the hinterland of the, the big cities or is it in the city? And it is an ongoing uh, conversation also between the politicians, but everybody agree on that Viborg must be the big city to draw uh, the main um, development for companies and residential and also that is where people want to move to the city. I don't know if that was kind of an answer for your yes. question. Sure, thanks. There is still one question we can take. Thank you. Um, I'm Robert Thiemel from Vienna, Austria, and I was very delighted seeing uh, Vienna included in Tina's presentation. I actually worked on this architectural policy of Vienna also, and that's the reason why I wanted to ask um, not so much Högesund because uh, um, what you talked about is an urban planning document that is maybe something different, but uh, your architectural policies, I'm interested in how do you make them operational? How do you uh, make stakeholders following uh, the goals of your architectural policies? Yes, uh, 
we want to make sure that uh, in our architectural policy is something that we do every day. So example, like, like I told, next general we will have this builders forum and our city architect Leira Strömberg will give up, start the discussion about these issues. And she will meet them almost every week, <laughs> every month. And it's something that, that you discuss about and you cooperate. We have good tradition in that form, making cooperation with the private sector. So, so I can tell it's, it's, you can do it. <laughs> so, thank you for the questions. Thank you for our speakers. And uh, I, uh, you are all welcome tomorrow to continue the discussion because we have a, an uh, open meetup uh, where we discuss local architectural policies and there will be also some interesting presentations and a lot of discussion. Lena will be uh, the uh, moderator in that discussion. So, and now I give... Uh, the micro, thank you, to Hanna, who will introduce our next guest speaker from Great Britain.